Welcome back, everybody. This is our video solution to problem two from quiz four, spring 2023, math 302 at Cal State Fullerton. And in this problem, we're still working with the division algorithm. In fact, we're going to prove a portion of the division algorithm. So here we're assuming that we have two positive integers, a and b, and then four other integers, q, q prime, r, and r prime. Uh, and basically QR and Q prime R prime are going to form two what I called quotient remainder pairs or QR pairs. Uh, and so what that means is, well, that, well, A should be QB plus R, but also Q prime B plus R prime. And R and R prime, uh, well, yes, of course, they have to be greater than or equal to zero. That's just a copy of the original assumption up here. Uh, but also they need to be less than the divisor B. Now, uh, finally, uh, and this comes from our proof of the uh, existence uh, uh, part, portion of the division algorithm, um, we know that there is some quotient remainder pair where the quotient is the greatest element of this following set, which I'm denoting here Q for the, the, the set really of, of reasonable quotients. Um, so we're looking at all of the non-negative integers such that when you subtract that many copies of the divisor from A, you still set get something which is non-negative. So uh, we were able to show uh, in class that this was definitely a subset of, uh, for example, Z less than or equal to A. And as such, we can apply the well-ordering uh, axiom uh, to it. And we know then that we get a greatest element, and we called that greatest element little q. Okay, so and and then we showed that we were able to get a quotient remainder pair with little q, and then this remainder r is actually just a minus q b. Okay, so moving on, uh, yes, the division algorithm actually is going to tell us that this q r pair is unique. So the q and the q prime have to be the same, and the r and the r prime have to be the same, and we're being asked to prove this result. Okay, namely the uniqueness. So, uh, well, first things first, we have this Q prime here, and this equation up here tells us that uh, if I take A minus Q prime B, this will equal R prime, and R prime is greater than or equal to zero. And so this tells us that Q prime is actually an element of this set of quotients, right? This big Q. So this implies that Q prime is an element of big Q. But little Q is the greatest element of the set big Q. And so this implies that Q prime is less than or equal to Q. All right, well, that seems like halfway to showing that uh, the Q is equal to Q prime. Uh, which might make you think, okay, so now I need to show that Q is less than or equal to Q prime, uh, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Uh, it could be that Q prime is equal to Q, in which case we're really happy. So assume that Q prime is not equal, right? That it is strictly less than Q. In this case, we know then that Q prime plus one has to be less than or equal to Q. All right, and that's just a, a very basic little uh, statement about uh, inequalities of integers, but maybe we'll draw a little picture so you can see this. So I have an integer Q, and Q prime is strictly less. So maybe there's an integer less, there's another integer less, there's another one less. These are all going to be one apart, okay? So this distance here is one. Um, so it could be that Q prime is this next one. It also could be that Q prime uh, is over a little bit, right? So if I add one to Q prime and I'm right next to Q, okay, so then this would become Q prime plus one and then they would be equal to Q. Uh, on the other hand, if I start from a Q prime which is further to the left and I add one, now it's still going to be less than Q. So I have these two options. It's either gonna be less than Q or it's gonna equal Q. What absolutely can't happen is it cannot go past Q, all right? I cannot jump over and be greater than Q. Okay, so Q prime plus one is going to be less than or equal to Q. Okay, well, why is this good? Well, uh, let's say that I took A minus, and now I'm gonna use uh, Q prime plus one 
times b. Now, because q prime plus 1 is less than or equal to q, I actually know that q prime plus 1 has to be in this set big Q. In fact, once we knew that the greatest element of big Q was little q, we actually knew that this set was 0, 1, 2, through q. So we get all of the integers up to and including q. Okay, so down here, because q prime plus 1 is less than or equal to q, this tells us that q prime plus 1 is in the set q. And that tells me then that a minus q prime plus 1 times b should be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, but let's uh, work this out here. This is the same thing as a minus q prime times b minus b. And a minus q prime b, well, a minus q prime b, right, we see from this equation up here is equal to r prime. So this is equal to r prime minus b. But the assumption is that r prime is strictly less than b. And so r prime minus b is strictly less than 0. And this is a contradiction because we now have 0 is less than or equal to dot, 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 less than 0. Yeah, that would tell us 0 is less than 0. And that's definitely a contradiction. Where does the contradiction come from? It came from our assumption that q prime was strictly less than q. So from here, we're able to conclude that q prime is equal to q. And now getting that r is equal to r prime should be a very straightforward matter. All right, so thus, well, what is r? r is equal to a minus qb. This comes from our assumption that a is equal to qb plus r. But we just established that q and q prime are the same. So a minus qb is the same as a minus q prime b. But we established just up above that a minus q prime b is equal to r prime. And so we conclude that r is equal to r prime. OK, and so the proof is done. OK, everybody, we'll see you next time when we start working with the Euclidean algorithm.